following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to our man Dave in Clearwater. Hey, Dave, Happy New Year. What's happening, man? <clears throat> happy New Year, too, my brother. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. How you been? I am doing well, man. I'm doing well. Can I throw a quote out at you? Sure. <laughs> in the market, somebody knows something. Someone always knows something. That statement was made by a great trader by the name of Tom O'Brien about six, seven years ago oh yeah and it kind of hit me like a brick but you're right somebody always knows something hey carlos what's going on brother i'm calling you back tom this morning i had the pleasure to talk to you and your son and i don't want to miss the opportunity to talk to you again why well, I, I think you made some money on this bond <laughs> oh yes tom your newsletter helped me that's a beautiful yeah. thing we appreciate the growling problem with us out here now tom o'brien <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Accept your own beauty. You are beautiful no matter what your mind tells you. That is a fact. If you are aware of your own beauty and accept your own beauty, the opinions of others doesn't affect you at all. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 181, NASDAQ off 57, S&P's down 19, gold contract up $6.70, trading at 11.97 an ounce. Silver up 4 cents at $17.14 an ounce. Platinum up 2 bucks at 9.87 an ounce. Copper down two and a half pennies at 266 a pound. Light sweet crude off 53 cents, fifty-two dollars sixty-five cents a barrel. Notes. Ten-year note up one tick, 124.07. 30-year bond down four ticks, 150.08. What's unusual out here, folks, is that you get a market that's getting hammered, and these notes and bonds are not moving. Uh, they they rejected lower price last week, had lighter volume, but bottom line, I want to see some movement topside with wide price spread. King dollar, get out the peanut butter and jelly, get out the butter, get it all out, folks, and toast it up because it is toast. Down 126 ticks, trading at 100.400. King dollar last week failed on price, failed on volume on the dailies, on the weeklies. King dollar went higher again this morning. It's already given up 400 ticks, and now you're down an additional 126. It looks like King dollar's setting up a very large ABC structure on the way down that will bring it into the 95 area. Euro, the euro is at 106, and the yen is at 113.61. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? You're down a buck 80. You're inside the lower range. You have volume out here of uh, 53 million, which is not big volume. We, we hit highs. Um, you know, last week with 59, we'll see whether uh, we end up uh, banging into this uh, 80, 78, 80 million uh, coming into the close. But right now, that's still light volume on the way down. Dow Industrials, what do we have with the Dow Industrials? Dow Industrials right now, trading back 175 bucks. You're at 99, 918. Now, it looks like we're getting a little juice inside the Dow, and the Dow's very capable of uh, banging out about 850 today. And if you get 850, that's gonna be expansion of volume on the way down. NASDAQ Composite, the composite's getting hit out here today. Composite is down 56 bucks right now. You're at 5606. Now the composite has a long way to go in order to get in the lower ranges. The composite, you know, if we go back to November 4th, we're at 5,000. 34. We're still at 5604. First, the composite would have to get back inside 5564. And what we do have in the composite right now, we're at 1.3 billion. So the composite looks to me like it will have volume on the way down. We go to the uh, small caps. You take a look at the IWM. IWM definitely has volume on the way down. We've already done 31 million shares. That's after making a high last week with 29 million. So the small caps are coming into the lower swing point. With an expansion of volume, that's saying that the small caps uh, are leading the market down, and you got 
134.31 and 127.72, the high from the 11th of November is game. Uh, that is the IWM. If you go into the Russell, the, the indice itself, Russell is uh, at 13.53. That's uh, going into the lowest swing point of uh, 13.42. In fact, we hit 13.42, and I expect you're going to see that that got hit with higher volume. Gold contract. What do we have with gold? Gold contract out. Uh, GCJ, GC. Gold contract out here today. Traded to a high of 12.01. Uh, we are at uh, 1197 right now. You're up 650. Uh, you got 180,000 contracts um, under the belt. Decent, decent volume. This wants to make its way up to the uh, 1222. I expect what you're going to see here is that we're actually going to see. Let's see. Let me fix this up for a second. We we are going to see uh, this this contract here. Sorry, one second, folks. I just got to get this back up. And we will, there we go. That this contract will uh, run up into the 1258 area. And we'll see whether it's going to be a monster ABC up. We already have uh, two separate ABC structures on the way up. Uh, it's going to be really intriguing uh, if, in fact, it, it does a third one. Silver, silver set up the exact same way. Sil silver actually, uh, see, uh, was actually stronger than gold when we go back to last Friday. It was a, it was a nice setup how silver came into the swing point. Uh, right now, we've done 54,000 contracts. Uh, you're trading into the uh, swing from 1736. Today, we hit uh, 1729. Uh, this is, yeah, this is nice. This is laying right underneath the, the high. So the last high up here, we had 59,000 contracts. We've done 54 today. So you're pushing into that with volume. That silver contract wants to get up into this $19 and 10 cents. Now, notes. Let's go to the note market. So, notes and bonds, folks, are just trading sideways. The, the volume's not bad in the 10-year. The 10-year, we've done a million contracts thus far. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to need more juice to get the higher price. You know, it's, it rejected lower price last week, had light of volume, all of the above. Now, we'll see whether it can get uh, some juice on the way up. Uh, what is unusual out here today, no doubt, though, is that you have a market, um, percentage-wise, that's down pretty good, and these are not moving uh, higher. You have the, the Dow Industrials right now are down 8 tenths of a percent, NASDAQ's down 1%, one point, uh, 1%, and the S&Ps are off 7 tenths of 1%. King dollar, King dollar is toast. King dollar, there's a seller in King dollar, and it's just relentless. Uh, you know, last week, what you had is that you had King dollar try to pick its head up, gets 100 735 gave it up. Friday 10850 gave it up. Today 101015 gave it up. This is this looks to me like it's a monster ABC structure on the way down and just as we had gone very quickly from the 95 to the 103 mark um, this looks to me like we're going to be going right back to that level. Uh, we we're at 95 uh, let's see. So you're at 94 in August, we're at 95 um, in September. Uh, we were at 103 in December, and it's making its way right back down the other side. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Dow Industrials are down 177. NASDAQ's off 56. S&Ps are off 18. We'll get them right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. 
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. The Dow right now is down 177. You get the Nasdaq off 57. S&Ps are off 19. As we do each and every Monday at 20 past the first hour, let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes. Now, don't forget, folks, at TFNN, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we start live programming. 8 o'clock in the morning, we go to 5 in the afternoon. Tuesday, Thursday, 7 o'clock in the morning to 6 in the afternoon. Steve has an outstanding show every trading day, right here, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. All the programming at TFNN, you can get right on your cell phone. You go to TFNN.com, hit Tiger TV. You're going to get some great HD quality video as well as audio. Now, as you're over at TFNN, you can also test drive Steve's newsletter. It's Mastering Probability. The way you do that, go to TFNN, go to Newsletters, go to Trading Newsletters. You can test drive Mastering Probability 30 days absolutely free. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, it was a Cadillac that won the 24 hours of Daytona last night. But really? it, wasn't your, it wasn't your grandfather's Cadillac, that's for sure. Yeah, no, I didn't see it. It was, huh? That's, man, that, you know, they've been putting a lot of money into those Cadillacs, man. That's, they, oh. they, they want that brand back, and they'll probably they, get they, it. They, they, yeah, they do. And Jeff Gordon actually was, uh, was driving in that car, too. So there's four drivers, typically, that uh, are in that 24-hour race. But, you know, you and I, wow. we're going to talk about the 24 hours of the markets, right? Because we trade these things. You can trade them basically 24 hours a day that's come a Sunday evening. Yep. And, and uh, yesterday evening really set up kind of an interesting... Um, pattern for today in that our markets gapped down. Several of the indices had gapped down. The actual, the equity futures contracts gapped down last night at the open. And then we had some follow through to the downside. So um, just to set the uh, set the parameters with okay. regard to where we're at, um, the Dow typically makes a bottom, not a top, because here there's the potential for a top, but typically it makes a bottom on January 30th, today, January 30th. Now, you and I last week, looked at how on January 23rd, the cycle that is associated with all first year presidents came in on Monday. So, so far that bottom inside the Dow uh, uh, last Monday is the bottom. Until it gets taken out, I'm gonna assume that that is still the bottom and that the market moves up in through uh, early February, around February 10th, pulls back into the end of February before it then starts moving higher into uh, May 22nd out there. And today, the, the signal that the S&P 500 created, because, you know, it, for you, the market talks, walk and, talks walks, and squawks yeah. at swing points, yeah. and you take a look at volume, the market's always speaking to us, or it can speak to us by creating these different 
je uh, candlestick signals. In this case here, uh, when the uh, when the S and P gapped down this morning, it actually created an what's called an island top pattern where you have a gap between price, which we did out here. I'm showing this on my chart. And it was really a three day island that was formed out here. And it it can be a very bearish signal out here. Now, I am more neutral than I am bearish out here. And I'll go through some of the reasons why. But candlesticks, I have found the candlestick signals work best when they occur at the completion of a pattern, either a top or at a bottom. And one of the topping patterns inside the S&P 500, one that I like to trade and be aware of, is when price moves higher, does with le less relative strength out here. When it's moving lower, does with less relative weakness. And the way that I take a look at that, Tom, is I use a typical relative strength indicator. And when it gets above 70 is when I start trying to identify the swing point associated with the highest high of that indicator, which is where this little black line starts on my chart out here. And then what I do is I wait to see if we get, I wait for that indicator to get down below the 70 level, which is typically where people refer to it as maybe being overbought. But I wait for it to get down below there. And then I see, does the market go on to make a higher high without a confirmation of a higher high inside that indicator. But the real key to that pattern is waiting for some type of, in this case here, bearish reversal signal. Okay. The island top most definitely qualifies for that. So we have to be aware of that. Also, if we take a look at one of the tools inside the Chapman wave, what he refers to as letter G, I call it the seventh wave move. Well, inside the S&P 500, we actually got a confirmation of that on Friday. So the the, the addition of an island top is just a double confirmation of that. Yet I'm still neutral with regard to the market because of that undertone of knowing that the Dow seasonally makes a low at the end of January or could have been last week as well. So let's say that the uh, market has formed a uh, – let's go with the, the, the process that perhaps a top is formed. And where is price going to head to? This chart here, when, when we have cleared all types of resistance on the left-hand side of the chart, no swing point for us to take a look at, that's when I really like to take a look at, hey, what's going on with regard to the horizontal trading range boundary lines? And these are levels that are established based on all of the data in this chart. This data is from 1997. So I have 20 years worth of data. And this is a monthly chart. And this is a chart with monthly candlesticks open and closes. And what I do is I the system identifies the largest number of opens or closes. So on the right-hand side, we can see at the price level of 1124 for the S&P, there were 23 during the last 20 years, 23 opens or closes. The next price with the highest level was at 1322, 1321.96 to be exact. And we had 20. And those two levels identify the equidistant ranges up at the top and at the bottom. So in the S&P 500, 2307 is a significant area of resistance. Really suggests that, hey, a pullback is in order here. And that's really what the market is communicating to us today. Now, the real key levels, the red line is the monthly levels. I identify these levels, these horizontal trading ranges, on a daily basis. Because a daily close, you've got five of them typically during a week, whereas in a monthly, you just have one. So there are different numbers that get generated. And the daily level for us to be paying attention to, as far as where price is likely to pull back to, is the 2242 level. And that is the daily horizontal trading range boundary line. If it, if it gets below there, the S&P 500, then its next level to the downside could be 2110. To the upside, if that island top gets taken out, there's, I like the expression, there's nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern, then we would be looking for the S&P to run up to the 23-29 level. Now, last week, the mainstream media was all talking about 20,000 inside of the Dow. And if we utilize the same set of tools, taking a look at these horizontal trading ranges, the real number where the big party should have been thrown was at 18,927. That was the monthly horizontal trading range number. Once price got above that, what typically happens is it targets the next level. So over time, the Dow should be targeting the 20,900 area. And uh, clearing 19,399, that was a big deal as well because that was the weekly. 
So I take a look at either the weekly, the daily, or the uh, monthly numbers out here. So on any pullback out here inside the Dow, I'll be watching 19,398. That's about another 600 points to the uh, downside. Or it could be just simply a small pullback to the 19,650 level. That would be intriguing, though, because like when you're talking that we may have made a bottom last week, anything yep. below 19,677 are, in fact, if we go to... 2242, that means that the whole thing got inverted, right? Well, I, I would say that the the um, what what I would take a look at is says that the first year presidential campaign aspect of it uh, isn't really the underlying pattern. Okay, I, I would say that I because it. then it would I got really it. Okay. be. Yeah, yeah, I'd really be looking for the annual seasonal well, you cycle. It. Right, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. More, more so than inverting. So uh, we have plenty to pay attention to. We're going to do it here at TFNN because we have the 24 hours of TFNN. It's a beautiful thing. And it folks, is. come over to our website at TFNN. Go to newsletters. Go to trading newsletters. You can test drive marketing probability right here, right now, 30 days, absolutely free. Steve, thanks so much, man. Look forward to the show tomorrow. You bet, Tom. Take care. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The Dow right now is down 169. You get the NASDAQ off 57. S&Ps are down 18. Let's go take a look inside the Dow Industrials, see what the strength is versus the weakness. So you only have three stocks that are positive inside the Dow today. Uh, you have uh, Disney is up 1%. Walmart is up 8 tenths of a percent. American Express is up 3 tenths. Uh, taken away from it. Chevron is down 2.3%. 
uh, $2.62. You get DuPont off uh, free, 2.2% uh, rather, 173. Caterpillar's up 2.2%, uh, $2.21. And Intel is down 1.5%. We're well, going to take a look at the NDX100. Inside the NDX100, uh, the leader out here is uh, Dollar Tree. That's up uh, 1.6%. 1 Xilinx is up 1.1, Viacom is up 1, and Vodafone is up 1.1. Taken away from it, uh, American Airlines is down 4.7%. You get uh, Cognizant Technology off 4.5%. Vertex Pharmaceuticals down 3.5%. Uh, and Insight um, is down 2.9%. If we go back to American and just take a look at American for a second. So American, let's see, you get a... That gap's lower, and if you want to see something, it's pretty amazing, actually. Um, you know, American, did they come up with the numbers on Friday? Let me just see something here. Because what had happened is that Friday. Yeah, so they came out with their numbers on Friday. And what you saw is uh, this little baby opened higher this is one of the this is a monster bearish engulfing you know so picture what it did it, it opened at 50 bucks uh traded all the way down to 46 and closed at 46 uh, 72. huge volume you know we had first we had made a high going back uh, the 9th of december you made that high with 2.5 million sold off all day with 4.7 million so what it did in those six hours it wiped out everyone that had bought from the December 2nd area, and then what does it do today? It gaps down. Uh, if we bring this back a bit, let's take a look at this. So this also looks like, okay, so it failed the swing point. So you, you, the game, you're at 44.72, it's game for 33 bucks, big numbers. Um, let's go take a look at a few more of these in, inside the NDX 100. Uh, no, I know where we're gonna go. We're gonna go the IBB. Okay, so the biotechs. Um, let's take a look with the biotech. So the biotech's uh, back 377, which is not a whole bunch, by the way, uh, with light volume. Um, you know, this can't handle higher price, but thus far, each time it comes down into this, uh, well, it has lower to go, 250, 240. Um, bottom line is that uh, what, what does end up happening coming down at those levels uh, the volume dies in the vine. So that's kind of the streak that it's been on, the consolidation that's been on, rather. Uh, if we do go over and we take a look at uh, Apple, um, Apple, let's see, they come out with uh, their numbers tomorrow at 4.30 after the close. Apple's trading $121 and well, we'll see what flies tomorrow. Now, Apple took out its swing point from the 11th of October with light volume. So Apple can be setting up for a nice hit on the way down. You know, it's going into the downdraft from August of 2015. The high of that is $122.57. We did $385 million, and last week, yeah, this is cool. So last week we committed to this with $124 million versus 385 million. That's a vicious supply line it's going into. So that would be the bearish part of it. The bullish part for Apple is that it did have volume up to $116. You know, so maybe Apple's only going to pull back to $116. You know, so the, the yin and the yang there is pretty cool. Um, let's go take a look at the uh, XAU, the HUI. Uh, XAU out here uh, trading at $88.96. Um, bottom line is that, uh, you know, you, you have gold hanging up here, but these equities need some juice, you know, in order to sustain higher price. Uh, last week on the 24th, that benchmark on the 24th for both the XAU and the HUI, that's a good benchmark. It has volume up there. That'll get retested. The, they are not catching a bit out here today. Uh, the Gold Bugs Index, same type of setup. Uh, we'll see, in fact, let me do, I'm going to go right to what I want to do this. We're going to go right to ABX. See, between ABX and Newmont. So, Barrick Gold out here today. Barrick is, you know, it had nice volume up on the 24th. You did 15 million today. It's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. And it's hanging up there in price. 
So that's, that would be bullish for the GDX. Inside, Newmont's a close call. Yeah, Newmont needs, Newmont needs more volume. Newmont has turned into a real personality stock too, folks. Okay, if, you, if you're trading the gold market, you got to keep your eye on Newmont because it has, it's two high volume swing points want to get tested. That being said, when this pulls back, man, it, it pulls back with some volume. So you got to keep your eye on each one of those pullbacks. Last pullback we did on 7.6 million after going higher with 8.5. Um, inside the, the two royalty stocks out here. Now, this is really positive for the uh, metals market. And what it is is this. The Franco Nevada and Royal Gold, they were both having a hard time getting high, holding higher price. Well, what they did last, uh, the 24th, they showed this. They, they showed what they made out of the 24th. They're pushing into that swing. They're pushing it with volume. They're back down with lighter volume. And they both did it. Uh, and that's what... I definitely wanted to see, um, you know, because both of them had been lagging. And uh, that, those, those are two good days. And they were very subtle. They were very subtle. Um, you know, Royal Gold went the day before, went on the 23rd with 847,000. And then it did uh, 625 the next day. You know, they, they're taking out the supply line. It's, it's slow, uh, but they are taking it out. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We take a look at the indice volume out here. You're dealing with uh, 30 minutes left. We're at 578 million on the NYSE. So that's saying that that, that thing will, that'll, that'll get it to 800 million on the way uh, down today. On the NASDAQ composite, we're at 1.420. So that should get, well, that's gonna be a close call. I don't think that will make one, 1.8. 1 um, it may. Uh, so the, the composite itself, that would be saying the composite uh, is pulling back, and that would still be a light volume pullback. Now, certainly um, the, uh, the, Qs, the, the Qs right now are trading down $1.19. That also is pulling back with volume. We've already done 20 million shares. You're going at the 17 million, 17.6 million. We go take a look at the XLE, the energy sector. Um, energy sector out, down here, that's starting to break down. Uh, we did 10 million shares. You're breaking a B point. You're not breaking that with volume, but you're right into a gap. The, the gap it's trying to go into is $71.26. That's going to that's gonna get filled. I suspect the XLE looks like it's making its way down to $69.88. Uh, CVX, Chevron is taking the hit out here uh, today. Let's see, did they come up with numbers? What happened here? Yeah, you stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow Industrials right now down 168. NASDAQ off 57. S&Ps are down 18. We're going to be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. 
These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow right now is down 168. You get the Nasdaq off 59. S&Ps are down 17. And if we go over and we take a look at uh, NGD, folks, uh, this is new gold. This is down 98 cents. And it's trading at $2.98. Now, we have an this in the gold report, and we got stopped out on the open. You do not want to stay in the stock, folks. We got a couple of tigers saying they want to look at it. Uh, bottom line, uh, here, well, I'll go through the whole, whole deal with you. So they did an update this morning, um, and uh, the update, there's a couple of different parts of the update. Uh, they come out with their numbers. The bottom line is that uh, they are going to need to do a secondary, number one in the secondary, uh, this morning, they thought the secondary would come out at about $3. This is, secondary was not going to come out at $3 when they're trading $3. They did an update of their mine structure, and the bottom line is that uh, it's going to cost them more money. And then you had a huge amount of movement. Uh, you had the uh, executive uh, chairman step down. You had the, let's see who else stepped down. Bottom line, um, let's see, here we go. New gold, uh, okay, they're estimating that they got to raise 150 equity at $3. But, folks, it's, it's not going to be raised at $3 when the stock is traded at $2.97. You gotta, when this happens, you got to go out, you got to sell the deal. They're going to sell a bot deal. The bot deal is going to be a lot uh, less expensive than that. Um, they updated their rainy, rainy river update. Uh, that's going to cost them more money to get gold out of the ground. Um, bottom line, you know, if, if you got the gold report and you put the stop in, great, you're all set. If you didn't, you're in tough shape and you're going to have to make a decision here. But this here looks to me like it's a, a very large ABC structure on the way down. I'd get out, take it, take it, and see you later. Because bottom line is that this thing can go to 176 in a heartbeat. And right now you're at 297. Pretty intense, but bottom line, it's not what it was yesterday. It's what you have right now. And right now that equity uh, is thundering down on volume. That's the bottom line. Some of the high volume stocks uh, in this uh, market right now. You get Rite Aid uh, down a buck twenty. That's now, Walgreens has taken over Rite Aid, uh, but they're going to take it over at a lot less expensive, so that thing's taking a big hit. Uh, Fitbit's down. They're not selling enough Fitbits. I, don't, I'm, I actually, I, I love the Fitbit. I have it, but I can't figure out how they make any money on it anyway because you only buy it once. It's not like a subscription-based model. I, you know, I, how, are you, how are you going to make more money on it? We'll, but anyway, they have, they're having a tough time. Uh, Microsoft is off 87 cents. You have uh, WeatherFit off uh, 10 cents. GE is down eight. Uh, Transocean is off a buck. You got uh, Facebook off a buck fifty. And we're going to be coming out with some numbers, lots of numbers actually. Facebook 
let's see, the second, yeah. So Facebook is coming out in the second at five minutes past four. And my volume's not that bad. Uh, Amazon is also the, one of the big ones this week. Amazon is coming out. Let's see when they're coming out. They're coming out the second also. So this is going to be pretty cool. So Amazon and Facebook uh, are both coming out on the second. Um, that's that's gonna that's that's gonna put some uh, action uh, into the market, no doubt. Uh, on the second, let's go over and take a look at the uh, futures right now. Uh, yeah, that was a nice flip. Okay, so thanks, Terry. So the uh, E minis. Let's see what they just did. Now we're only down 15. Uh, they just went from a price point of. Uh, 2269 to 2273. What's going to be intriguing here is that I know one of the Tigers was saying that we haven't been down 1%. I, I believe, let me just find this. Is, was it 77 days? One second. Okay. This is day number 77. Thanks, P. Uh, that we have not, uh, is it up or down? Is it both? One second. No, without a 1% decline. And right now, right, right now, you have the NASDAQ is down 9 tenths of 1%. S&Ps are down 8 tenths. Uh, the Dow is off 7 tenths. Uh, so it looks like they're going to want to keep that record going uh, as we come into the close out here. If we go take a look at the NQs, the NQs right now are trading at uh, 51.18. And... Let's see, seven minutes into it. Well, the NQs are going to do a little bit more. This is going to get intriguing to see how this shakes out. So the NQs are going to try to make it that, well, they're right where they look like they're going to try to make it. This, this would have to get, uh, we get three minutes. Yeah, I could do it. You get, right now we have uh, 4,100 contracts versus the 4,300. That was the first blip topside at uh, 220 today. But if, they, if you get, when you get a surge like this and you don't make it um, this close to the close, it's going to be a big deal. So I would say that the Qs right now and the N, NQs have, it's actually two and a half minutes to get up and over 21, well, 51, 50, 21. And we're right at it. We're at 51, 20. Because if it gets over it, <laughs> this this thing could definitely get right into the uh, when we came down this morning folks we came down 22 ticks inside the NDX 100 and at the open went from 5145 to 5123 and when you actually get into something like that meaning if if it can actually get into that bar you know you could get quick go up just as quick now I suspect, well, actually, let, let me go look at this for a second. So if we actually go into the queues for a second. Yeah, the queues have the juice, too. I mean, the, the bottom line is that it's going to be all about price here in, in two minutes. Because if it can make the price, it hasn't made it yet. And what, what does happen is that the amount of energy that it takes to get into that is good. Um, is a lot. That's my, that's my point. And what we do have here is that you are at the first day of window dressing. So... Um, everything's on the table here. We get window dressing today, tomorrow, um, the next two days. And, you know, thus far, uh, bottom line is that uh, money hadn't been put into work all day long. You know, now we'll see uh, if, in fact, that money gets put to work. What we will get out of this uh, also, uh, more than likely, is that you're going to get an expansion of volume. Because when you get burst like this, you get the expansion of volume, then we'll see whether we hold price. Now, if we don't hold price and you get the expansion of volume, you have two different things end up happening. You have a high volume swing, you have expansion off the highs, that expansion off the highs would be with volume. Um, you know, if we go over and you just take a look at the SPY right now, you're at 60 million. We started the show at 52. It's not bad. You're going into, it's still light volume. Spies are a light volume pullback. Small caps, however, are a different, different animal. Small caps are not a, not a um, that, that is barreling with volume. We've done, we've done 34 million shares. You're going into 34 million. You know, it's going after the swing point with 34 million. So the way that the small caps are setting up, they are setting up to jump the creek. The creek would be set up at 133.12. And we'll see whether you wake up tomorrow morning and it jumps the creek and wants to run down to this 127. 
You know, so uh, it looks that the small caps thus far are the leaders on the way down. And we'll see, uh, you know, uh, if in fact uh, any of these other indices want to follow them. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. Dow right now. Down 130. NASDAQ is off 48. S&Ps are down 13. We're going to be right back, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So Dow right now uh, is off a uh, buck thirty-four. You get the Nasdaq off forty-seven. S and P's are off uh, thirteen. Let's go over to the financials. Uh, the XLF. Um, yeah, XLF uh, still backing down with light volume. You know, a bottom line is that. Uh, this is, you're down 39 million shares. You're, you're going into strength uh, from last week with uh, 92 million. So uh, that's going to need more volume to go to a lower price. Uh, JP Morgan, that's backing down with dramatically light volume. You're talking about um, light volume in a big way. Bank of America. Now, Bank of America got a little expansion of volume. Yeah, Bank of America got an expansion of volume. Citigroup. Citigroup is the weakest, but yet, that being said, this is light volume. Uh, Citi you know, Citigroup is off its high of $61.63. You're at 56. Um, Berkshire Hathaway, BRK. Berkshire is still the largest weighting structure uh, inside the uh, XLF, folks. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway is at 164.79. That's off a high of 167. 
Now, this is pretty cool. So this is trying to push into its last swing point from last week with dramatically lighter volume. So that sets up that Berkshire does want to basically make a run for 156. And right now, that's at 164. That would be, that'd be a big deal because uh, that certainly um, is a large weighting structure inside that XLF. Um, something that is going to get interesting um, is Capital One. So Capital One folks, they had, they had come out with their numbers uh, last week. Numbers were, you know, weren't that great, weren't that bad. They start rolling over slightly. But what they have, and not that this will be a huge amount of money, but it's going to be plenty. The medallions in New York City since 2014 have actually got cut in half. Uh, bottom line is that the medallions used to be worth a million dollars. Now they're worth about $500,000. That's quite a hit in the course of three years. And what uh, Capital One has a huge um, amount of loans out to that. Uh, the amount of loans that are out there are approximately $600 million. And 45% of those are underwater right now, meaning that they lent out more than the cost of the medallion. Because what you know, those medallions were gold, folks, the bottom line, until Uber came in, in the system. Uh, just two years ago, I remember we were going to the Traders Expo, not, it wouldn't have been last February, it would be two years ago, February. We're talking to the cabbie. The cabbie at that point said he was still taking a hit because he had said that they had gone down from 1.1 million to 800,000. And uh, bottom line is that uh, you can see now we went from 800 to 500. And the bottom line is that, uh, you know, those medallions, when those medallions were first out, they gave them to veterans and they were actually a giveaway. It was like, you know, so much of a fee, $20, $30. Then, of course, they turned into a regular market and New York being, Manhattan being the best market in the whole country, they turned into a fortune. Well, bottom line is that they have imploded. The assets worth a lot less money. Uh, so uh, we'll see where, uh, I guess, when you, the 600 million right now, that's not, that's not a huge amount. Not for a bank anyway, I guess. But bottom line, you'll be, you'll be reading more about that. That's what it comes down to. Uh, let's take a look. So uh, Whirlpool Corporation, Whirlpool's up $4, trading at 174 And And um, let's see. 425. So it looks like Whirlpool must have already come out with their numbers last week. It looks like they come up with they come out with numbers. Um, gap down. It's doing a counter trend bounce. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming back with some numbers after the close. We're right in the middle of earnings. You have Dow Industrials uh, down 126. Nasdaq's up 47. S&P's are down 13. We're gonna be right back, folks. <laughs> You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is TFNN. The following is a presentation of TFNN.
The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to Marty in Worcester. Hey, Marty, what's going on? Uh, hi, Mr. O'Brien. How are you? I'm doing great. How you been, man? Not bad. Good? In, uh, in fact, you know, you guys, over the time and with a few of your courses and seminars, you know, you taught me how to fish. That's a beautiful thing, bro. That's so cool. Yeah, it's true. And so what happens is I still listen all the time and to not only you, but some of the others. Sure. To, you know, get an idea where the fish might be biting. Yeah. But um, as far as your services, they're a bargain. When you compare them to a certain prominent man with real estate courses at $35,000 and no contact with the lecturers afterwards at all, and you think of what you guys do for a few hundred and you can get access and ask questions forever, you know, it's a great deal. No, no, we appreciate the growling problem with us out here. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Become a servant of love. Love, love is what makes you happy. And if you become a servant of love and your partner becomes a servant of love, the day will come when you can be with your partner with no guilt, no blame, no anger, and no sadness. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 122, NASDAQ off 47, SPs down 13, gold contract up $6.30, trading at $11.97 an ounce. Silver, $17.13 an ounce. Platinum, up four and a half bucks, $9.90 an ounce. Copper, down two and a half pennies at $2.66 a pound. Light sweet crude, off 51 cents, $52.67 a barrel. Notes, 10 year note. Down one tick, 124.04, 30 a bond, off 10 ticks, 150.02. Now, both notes and bonds, folks, rejected lower price last week, had light of volume, bottom line, didn't catch a bid out here today, uh, which is unusual in a down market. Because what we did do, we had volume uh, down on the NYSE. We did 872 million. Uh, the NASDAQ composite did 1.75. So NASDAQ composite was a little weak. Uh, market did come back percentage wise uh, coming into the close, but bottom line, that NYSE had volume on the way down. Small caps had volume on the way down. King dollar. What about King dollar? King dollar's toast, folks. Get the peanut butter, jelly, get all of it out. King dollar down 101 ticks, 100.425. Now, we'd have a King dollar. Had hit that high up there, 103. Tested it three different times in the last month. Failed each and every time. Failed each and every time to hold price last week and failed against once again today. It looks like it's a monster ABC down into the 95 area. We'll see how it attacks the B. So it went after the B point last week. Didn't have the volume for an ABC structure on the way down. Went topside again last Friday. Gave it up on price. Went topside again today. Gave it up on price. Uh, we'll see what kind of pressure it is on the way down. Euro. The euro is trading at 106. The yen is at 113.73. Now, the yen came down 1.37. Um, you know, that correlation there is that normally you see gold even get a bigger bid. Uh, bottom line, it got a bid, but uh, I expect you're going to see that yen continue lower. That's going to put the bid inside the gold market higher. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? So you're back at buck 42, you're at 227.55. Bottom line, that's a light volume pullback. You're coming into 95 million. So it's going to need a lot more than 95 million to get to lower price. You know, we'll see whether we get some follow through tomorrow. I expect it's going to try to make its way into uh, the 224.83 uh, mark. But bottom line is you're going to need volume. We are in window dressing, no two ways about that. Window dressing goes from today. Uh, going right out until uh, really Wednesday afternoon, Thursday. Let's see, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, that's, that's actually right into Thursday. Uh, Dow Industrials. Dow Industrials are down a buck 22. Uh, now, the Dow had an expansion of volume that we did at 872 million uh, in the Dow. Let's put this up for a second and see how this is shaking out. So, 
So, yeah, we definitely had an expansion volume here. So you're going against 829. You did 873. Um, composite. The NASDAQ composite. What we did with the composite is this. Composite uh, came down on price, down 47 bucks. Uh, that, we're at 56.13. The volume out here inside the indice was 1.759. That's not, that's not big volume either. So bottom line, you're going to need more volume in both of those indices. We take a look at the three Qs, the ETF structure. That came down on volume. Uh, we did 24 million shares. After making a high out here with the 15 million, you're going into 17 million. So correlation-wise out here, the, the Qs came down on volume. And we're going to be getting um, a lot of NDX stocks that continue to come out uh, this week. Um, and that's saying that, uh, guess what, that, uh, that those NDX stocks look like they're going to have some problems with their numbers. Uh, we go into the small cap. Small cap arena came down with big volume. We did 49 million, uh, 39 million shares. Uh, you're going into a swing point that had 34 million. We're at 134.29. That swing point is 133.17. I expect it's going to go right after it tomorrow. That's the way it seems to look right now. Because you, you, the small caps themselves made it down to 133.24. You closed at 134. 29, which is still down pretty good. Um, it looks like the small caps want to run to 127.772. Uh, King Dollar. What do you have with King Dollar? Good old King Dollar, folks, okay? Uh, bottom line, there she is. Bottom line, King Dollar uh, got up to a price point today of 101.015. We're at 104.15. And what you have here is this, is that we did volume today of uh, 38,000 contracts, which is good contract volume. The problem is that you're going into 61,000 contracts, you're going into 74,000 contracts, and, you know, that's, that's, that's a lot lighter volume. So it looks that we're building cars right now uh, to, number one, go after a B point again, a, a very large ABC structure on the way down. Notes, we go take a look at the, the note market. What we have with notes is this. The notes and bonds, uh, as I said a little bit earlier, I expected we'd get a better um, move higher. Didn't happen. Um, you're at 124.04 uh, inside the 10-year note. We got some volume going. Okay, so, you know, last week you rejected lower price, had lighter volume on the daily and the weekly. Now what's going to happen is that it's going to go after the higher, higher swing point, which is the 125.13. You're at 124.04. We're going to need more volume. That's the bottom line. Um, and it wasn't out here today when, in fact, um, the market, you know, was down pretty good uh, at, w at one point. You know, basically almost all day uh, was down pretty good, uh, except the last half hour. Start coming back. 30 years, the same type of setup. 30-year. Uh, Rejected lower price last week. Had light of volume. Uh, didn't catch the bid today. Um, little subtle. It's a little expansion of volume. I do expect we're going to try to test the 153.28 first, which is the higher swing points in both of those indices before we back off once again. That's if we back off. My take is we're going higher. I'm just saying that, that swing point is going to get tested. We're going to be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. 
Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n-a-d-e-x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Uh, uh, inside the Dow, the leaders versus the laggards. You had the leader out here was Disney. Uh, Disney was up 1%. Uh, you had Walmart up 1. Uh, taken away from it was Caterpillar down 2.2. DuPont was off 2.1. Let's go over to Caterpillar first and take a look at Caterpillar. So Caterpillar down 220 today. Still at a high. And, yeah, they already come out with their numbers. This is still a nice setup. This is, this is a setup that wants to run up to, uh, let's see. So A would be 72, 82, 17. In, no, 97. Oh, I see. Interesting. So, Caterpillar, folks, actually just finished an ABC structure on the way up. That's what it did. Yeah. So, that's going to have to build some cars for higher price. That's how that's how that's set up right now. That that just finished build, building that structure. Uh, inside the NDX 100, what we have, the leader out there was a Dollar Tree. That was up $1.20. Um, Cognizant Technology was down at 247 and if we go look at Cognizant Technology for a second, let's see what we got here. Oh, this is a problem, child. So Cognizant Technology has a high volume swing point. Low, that is. <laughs> They're coming out with the numbers on February 8th. So this gap's down today, has volume on the gap down. Closed just close Friday at 56, gaps down today to 53.55. And what's sticking out like a sore thumb is $49.74 from September 30th. Yeah, and you know, once actually, oh that, that, this is really a problem. 45 bucks. This is this has a monster high volume high at 45, and the volume low at 45 and the high of that is 55 93 so what has happened is that it's already come into the the top of that by two and a half points so your probability does get a bit higher that the the bottom of that is going we're going to go after it um numbers this week uh amazon so amazon's going to be coming out let's see uh we're talking thursday thursday let's see um yes thursday 
at one minute past four. Amazon right now. Oh man, this thing's ready to launch. This is sick. So Amazon traded down to 816 today, closed out at 830. You rejected lower price. You're right at the top of the range. Let me put this on a weekly. Yeah, on a weekly basis, this was actually pushing the swing high of last week with volume. So that's 843. We're pushing it with 16 million versus 14. Amazon's going to be a big one. So, you know, when I, when I look at that, that's saying, okay, Amazon could put some juice into the NDX 100. Um, Facebook. Facebook is also coming out. Oh, that's coming out the first, Facebook. So... That's Wednesday. Um, Facebook, uh, look at that's interesting. Traded the exact same way as Amazon. Um, got lower. It's right below its highs of the 29th of October. Now, wow, interesting. Okay, so check this out. Now, this is a huge difference between Amazon and Facebook. Facebook made a high of $133.50. Did it the week of October 28th. And watch how this come off this high, this is important, because Facebook looks to me like it's gonna get hammered. So, $133.50, October 28th, the week of that. Then you come off it with 182 million shares. So you made a high with 85 million. You come off it with 182 million. You continue lower with 175 million. You make a low with 150 million, 59. Okay, so, we know that when equities come off highs with volume, it can turn into much larger corrections. In Facebook's case, what, what did it also end up doing, releasing information to us? What it did is that as it went back up, way to see the anemic volume. We went back up the week of the 13th with 102 million, which was going against 300, uh, 300, which is going against 182 million. We went up last week with 90 million, going against the 182 million, and we'll see what we do this week. That's, that's saying that Facebook wants to trade down to like 112. That's going to be cool watching this thing shake out this week. Let me bring this back all the way to see where we are. Yeah, it's at, it's at highs. And Facebook has been a one-way trade. Facebook had traded July of 2013. It was to $24 and uh, goes up to 133. Big, big, big numbers. No two ways about that. The... Um, and of course, Apple, I think Apple is the, Apple, oh, this is cool, Apple's tomorrow. So tomorrow, as, after the close tomorrow, and the way that Apple also is trading out, uh, Apple doesn't look to me, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to get destroyed. It looks like 106 is in the, in the pie out here, 116 rather, and you're at 121. It had, it had good juice up to 116, but that's it. It's coming into this downdraft that's vicious from the, uh, August of 2015 area. You know, that supply line is pretty intense. And that's on the weekly. If we put this on the monthly, yeah, on the monthly Apple, you know, I suspect with their numbers, they come out at 116. After their numbers, this thing can go get back to 88 bucks, you know. So it's going to be intriguing to see exactly what Apple has to say and uh, how much they actually have taken in and what kind of new products they have. Uh, so right now they're expecting to uh, take in 51 billion. Actually, no, would it be, let's see, fourth quarter, 2017. Yeah, 51 billion, that, that's, that's what, 77 billion. They're, they're now 51 billion. That's, it's hard to figure out what, what Apple has done. What, what Apple does, folks, is that they don't, start, they don't have the calendar uh, January, February, March as their first quarter. Because what they like to do is, that they, and I don't blame them, they like to put the uh, Christmas quarter, I believe, in their first quarter. That's what they normally do. So bottom line is that... Uh, there's, there's going to be some decent volatility out there, uh, no, no, no doubt about that. We go up and we take a look at the oil market. Now, oil has, hasn't been able to hold the higher range. 
You know, we out with, we out with oil right now. It was only down 45 cents today. You're trading at 53.20, but anything under 54.02 is saying inside the oil market that oil number one wants to get back to um, where OPEC had its meeting, and that was November 30th. Uh, that's when the oil market went from 47 bucks up to 52.32 and had the volume on the move. So I expect first you're going to get into that area. Now, if you get into that area with volume, guess what? We're going all the way back down the other side to 45. Plenty of oil out here, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Dow finished down 122. NASDAQ off 47. S&P's down 13. We're going to be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour. Following the Tom O'Brien Show, Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with host Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. This this segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We had the uh, issues. We had Exxon Mobil down uh, 65 cents. The uh, Boeing was off 213. You had Johnson Johnson down 25. Big Blue was off a buck and a half. Uh, Microsoft was down 65. Let's go over to Big Blue first. So, uh, uh, IBM came out with numbers last week. Uh, numbers were, were good. Bottom line takes off top side, has juice behind the move. We go from uh, 166 up to the 180 mark. Um, you back down today, a uh, buck and a half, but this also is a back down uh, with light volume. Yeah, so, 
Let me bring this back a bit. The benchmark here is one cell. This is going to be interesting. So this 176 uh, area is a big number for uh, Big Blue. That was the swing point uh, in May of 2015. Um, and right prior to that, you have some real volume, 35 million shares. And see, so we took that out with 24 million. Um, that's, you know, if you hold price, great, it can go higher. But you don't hold that price at, one, at 176.30, uh, which it gave up today. That, that'll be a little problem child for um, Procter & Gamble. Uh, I mean, uh, for Exxon, for, not Exxon, for uh, IBM. Uh, Exxon, as I'm doing Exxon, so Exxon Mobil, uh, has had a problem for quite a while. Um, Chevron had been strong. You know, Chevron came off the highs today and came down with some volume. Uh, Exxon had hit a, its high in December, 93 bucks. Comes off the high of 93, you're at 84 right now. Broke another swing point today. Now, I didn't break it with volume. We did 12 million first to 16. That being said, uh, this looks to me like it's going to the bottom of the consolidation it's in which is a high volume bottom, which is 82.29. Now, the thing that's gonna be intriguing here is that the last time we were down there, it had volume. Well, we had volume the week of September 23rd of 2016. We had volume the week of the 30th. Now, if we whack that with volume and break it, this Exxon can go to 75 bucks. It has a high volume swing low from August of 2015. And the low of that is 66, the high is 75. When you start putting that together with um, the oil market in general, uh, having a problem getting to higher price, um, you can kind of see that uh, many, many of these uh, oil and gas uh, big companies, that's where they look like they want to go. We go over to the XAU. Actually, let's go to Barrick Gold first. Uh, Barrick and Newmont. So Barrick out here today closed up 22 cents. You're trading at 18.01. Uh, it's holding price. You know, if you if you're you know uh, whether it's a Nugget or a Dust uh, trader or a GDX trader, um, this is a good this is a good indication. You know that uh, the, the largest weighting structure inside the GDX is still pushing that high and it's pushing it with volume. So the high that we're talking about is 1835. We got to 1831 today. Uh, Newmont, we go take a look at Newmont. What do you have with Newmont out here? Uh, Newmont right now had, uh, this is subtle, but it had an expansion too. So Newmont, this is good. Newmont did uh, 5.4 million. We only did 4.4 uh, on Friday. Made a low of uh, 7.6. Now it's gonna need more volume, but it wants to go test it. The, the test up here would be 37.25. Uh, we go to the actual GDX. We take a look at the GDX. Uh, GDX, uh, 35 million shares, which is light volume, uh, going into the 78 million. That's why, that's another reason, the two that you do want to uh, take a look. Well, actually, let's go to Gold Corp next, because Gold Corp, yeah, see, Gold Corp's looking good too, man. Th these are the three largest, largest weighting structures. Gold Corp today is only up three cents, but watch what it did. Gold Corp went to $16.02. dollars and two cents had volume of 8 million shares. You're going into 13 million. We made a low last Friday with 4.9 million. That's a nice situation that uh, it wants to get into 1636 and it very well you know, could get up and over it. And that totally makes sense because the move on the stock has already been pretty intense. You know, we were at $11.91 December 15th, January, 24th, you're at $16. This thing looks to me like it wants to make a run to $19. And if that's the case, you're talking about, you know, a run from $11.90 to $19. Not, not a bad setup. Um, Harmony, Harmony Gold. Uh, Harmony out here today, up five cents, $2.49. You know, and if you, and this is with volume. Harmony wants to do an ABC structure on the way up. Uh, going after the B point of 258. And if you want to see something pretty cool. So if you were at the, the webinar um, that I did on Dust and Nugget, folks, okay? Um, you know, I was talking about that. You can go to the South African Exchange, see how Harmony and GFI are trading in the morning. Well, what you have is this. And Harmony this morning was up dramatically. It stayed up. 
it's coming into a B point in Johannesburg of 3549. So when I say 3549, that's 3549 Rand dollars to one US dollar. Okay? So watch this, because this is this doesn't happen a lot, but you, you gotta wrap your head around this because it's pretty cool. So the Rand dollar trades at 13.49. So let's just say 1350 to $1. Okay. This is pushing into the swing point with monster volume. Okay. Your, your A point, you know, is, is the lows, which is uh, 2587. Your B is uh, 3549. So uh, it's almost 1,000 Rand. So four, this wants to go like the 4,000 Rand. And right now, you're at 3380. Now, What's so cool about this is this. You pushed in with volume. You're pushing into a swing point with volume. You bring this back a little, and if you've been in this market, you know that the last time Harmony ran was on December of last year. Harmony ran from a price point of 833 Rand up to 6,200, okay? Now I'm gonna bring this back to the US market and to HMY. So now you're dealing with $2.49. Right? Watch this. Harmony last year ran from 58 cents up to 419, went sideways, and then topped out at 487. Okay? Out here today, not, not a huge amount of movement. Bottom line, though, nice setup. It's still below the B point of 258, hit 254. Now, on top of this, watch this. On top of this, folks, these guys stop making money hand over fist. This is the first time in four years um, it's real money that's coming in, in, in the coffers. Uh, how many climbed the most in a month after South African producer of precious metals uh, report first quarter profit the first time in four years? Now this is a profit. Okay, let me just go through it. Uh, let's see. Let's get this. Profit before one-time items uh, will probably be 1.39 Rand to 1.6 Rand for six months compared to it with the loss of one Rand a year earlier. So they, they went from the loss of a Rand to a profit of 1.4. It's, it's not a huge deal. It is a huge deal, however, in the context of the rearing, meaning, and, and what the rearing is, is this, is that they get paid in U.S. dollars, their expenses are in Rand dollars, and now you know that they get cash coming into the bottom line. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Dow Industrials closed down. 122. Nasdaq off 47. S&P's off 13. We're going to be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Can't 
cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Let's go over and take a look at Wells Fargo. So Wells Fargo uh, trading at 56.08. You're down 51 cents. Uh, that little baby is still hanging up at the highs, uh, as are all the rest of the financials. So it's going to be intriguing here is watching how the, um, the bond market plays out, folks. Okay, so... What you have is this, you, you, the banks come off the lows, fast, furious, all of the above. Wells Fargo is at 44 bucks uh, on the 4th of November. It's at 56 now. When you take a look at this, you are at highs. I believe it's testing, yeah, 58's a high. So it's trying to test the high. Now, the test on Wells Fargo up here is anemic. So this is gonna be really intriguing to see, can it make it and stay up there or not. It doesn't look like it's going to. Um, if we go back to, let me go back to the T, I'm gonna go back to the US one. We're gonna take a look at these bonds. So in order for the banking structure to get to higher price, and one of the main reasons that the banking structure took off like a rocket ship, well, there's a couple different reasons. Um, less, less, Regulation would do it, um, looser regulation would do it, but the biggest thing that does it on a fundamental basis that puts money right in their pocket immediately is higher interest rates. Highest, higher interest rates, when the Federal Reserve goes up a quarter percent, folks, on the rate structure, okay, on the short-term bank-to-bank rate, immediately everything, all the money that's in the banks, they immediately make a quarter percent. Okay, so you can see it's that immediate. It's not, they don't have to do anything, okay? The spread goes up Im immediately because what happens is that the spread goes up on all the LIBOR loans out there, on all the, um, any adjustable rate mortgage goes up immediately. Um, any business loans, not all, not all of them, many of them go up because they're adjustable rate mortgages. So the bottom line, you can see the correlation. The correlation is absolutely direct not when the bond market goes up, it's when the Fed pushes it up, okay? That being said, what does happen is that the bond market is the best predictor of whether the Fed's gonna be going up or not. So bottom line, since, since the Fed came out with the raise of one quarter point, the 30-year bond went from $177 uh, down to 148. That's a monster hit, that's a big hit. That being said, as I've said many times, it didn't break the lowest swing point. So when you take a look at this, right now the camp is still out that the bond market would be in a bear versus a bull. The last time that we ever took out a major swing point was 1999. I, I know this sounds bizarre, believe me, I know it is. Because at points between <laughs> 1999, there was a couple times in there that I was bearish beyond belief in bonds, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm bullish in bonds. I'm still bullish in bonds. And the reason being, well, there's a lot of different reasons. Um, one of the main reasons are that, number one, you didn't break down 
And what you what the bond market has shown, the, the bond market's shown strength. And the dollar has shown tremendous weakness. So when they start putting those together, it's like, okay, it looks like bonds want higher price, dollar wants lower price. What hasn't happened though, and this is why I'm bringing this up right now, is that the financials haven't broken down. And if the financials don't break down, the financials are saying that rates are going to be going up. So this is gonna be really intriguing and if you latch on to this, this, this bond market, I feel, can give us the most amount and the most consistent, the bond market has given us the most consistent information. The key here is that if it does break that major swing, then you're saying you're in a higher rate environment, and then the question's gonna be, are we in a higher rate environment because there's so much business? Are we in a higher rate environment because we have inflation? Why are we in a higher rate environment? You, you, in order to basically move around the marketplace, you wanna know that. Because what happens is that in a higher rate environment, if in fact inflation is over the cost of money, no problem. If the cost of money is over inflation, that's going to present problems um, and it's going to present many problems to a lot of companies. Um, we, when you get into the aspect of the amount of cash that's overseas, so what Trump had been saying is that he felt that uh, he was going to try to get these companies to bring the amount of cash that they have overseas, uh, don't make the tax as large as, they, as it has been. Uh, well, the companies themselves are not banking on that. And the reason I'm saying that is this, is that Microsoft turned around and came out today. That, so picture this, folks. Microsoft, this is amazing, actually. Microsoft has, they're, they're in the process of doing another $17 billion bond deal, right? Microsoft has... 17. They did a $25 billion bond deal only like six months ago. But let me get the amount of money they have overseas. I think it's $121 billion overseas. And they, sh they have this short-term debt that's due in about a year. So what they're doing, they're not banking on getting that money back from overseas. What they're banking on is that they can push this deal out, which they'll be able to push a deal out pretty quick, I meaning $117 billion in order to pay off something that's coming due a year from now. You know, so that is a big heads up uh, in the context that, you know, these large tech companies, they have plenty of uh, CPAs working 24 hours a day to make sure that they get the uh, least, or they pay the least amount of money on a continual basis. So when I look at that aspect, I'm telling myself, oh, this is gonna get intriguing. So the if we start seeing the other large tech companies do the same thing, meaning that they're still going to the bond market versus bringing the money back, what that is saying is that the, it's not gonna be as easy as, um, it's not that it's been led to be out there, uh, but it looks at this particular point that it's not gonna happen. That's how this is shaken out. Um, Apple, we'll see what Apple ends up doing because Apple certainly has, they have so much money overseas, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, oh, this is going to be interesting. Watch this. This just came across the tape. Um, no, this came across to, uh, earlier. J.P. Morgan sees uh, uh, fiscal year second quarter guidance missing expectations. Apple dropped as much as 1.1 intraday um, ahead of the uh, earnings post market tomorrow. Uh, as uh, J.P. Morgan analyst Rod Hall uh, says, uh, they he's expecting a week. Second quarter guidance. Guidance for the second quarter is likely to be lower than many expect on weaker iPhone volume unit. Um, iPhones, ASPs may uh, partially offset this though. Negative foreign currency impact will likely make the two effects a wash. Um, hey, we'll see, where, we'll see where that shakes out. We'll also see uh, where the aspect of uh, the strong dollar uh, affects their numbers. Uh, in an Apple's case, well actually let, let's take a look at Apple, where they make all their money. So, Apple's looking to take in like 77 billion and they get, a, they get 86, well no, they get 86 billion from, from South America and North America, 62 billion from Asia, 50 billion from Europe and 16 billion from Japan. They're pretty spread out, man. 
137, six, 136 billion of that is from iPhones alone. Man, oh man, iPhones where it's at. You stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And if we uh, go overseas, uh, what you're going to see uh, overseas, folks, is that, uh, well, in Asia, this is uh, Shanghai is closed until Friday. It's the Chinese New Year. Started last night. Uh, Nikkei, however, uh, Nikkei uh, last night, I uh, was trading down 57 at 13, um, 849. Now, it's going to be intriguing with the Nikkei tonight is this. Uh, the yen uh, all day long has continued to get stronger. A strong yen uh, takes this Nikkei south pretty quickly. Uh, so we're, at, we're, we're down 128 today in the yen. Um, and I believe that the Bank of... Um, well, this is this afternoon. Uh, let's see. Japan should make greater use of its fiscal stimulus to boost the economy. Uh, they're going to be making, uh, I, I believe, also some policy decisions uh, in the morning. Uh, that being said, uh, the Nikkei bottom line looks to me like you're going to be coming off that high. The Nikkei right now is 19,368. That can come down to that uh, 19,941 area. Uh, we go to the UK. We take a look at the, the FTSE 100. Uh, FTSE 100 today was down 66 bucks. Uh, at 7118 and this broke a B point and had uh, volumes it's an ABC structure on the way down so this is a big heads up you know uh, this was the first ABC structure on the way down uh, in a long time your A point on this is 7354 your B is uh, 7131 it's a good one 
So they got a couple hundred bucks. So that brings it down to 7,000. And right now it's 7118. And that did have an expansion of volume. DAX in Germany. Take a look at the DAX in Germany. Uh, DAX came down 132. Now the DAX in Germany looks like our NASDAQ. Just keeps going higher, higher. Uh, and the DAX in Germany, okay, I don't have that volume yet. Uh, DAX in Germany, you know, we'll see um, 11,692. Uh, we're at 11,681 right now. You get into, so that's only 20 points down. You get into those 20 points down, that can set up uh, going back to the 11,000. So that would be quite a hit uh, if, in fact, uh, you get that kind of selling on the way down. Our own selling out here, um, inside the SPY today, it was light volume. Uh, you did uh, 78 million. Small caps, different ball game though. Small caps folks had the volume on the move late, lower. 40 million shares. That's, uh, you know, bottom line, you've, you've wiped out the gains uh, of anyone who bought here since the December 7th. And that's how these things like to operate. Um, and, and I expect the, the small caps are going to try to jump the creek tomorrow morning. It won't be hard for it to jump the creek either. The creek is set up at 133.17. And uh, what the small caps did this morning is that they gapped away. They had closed at 136.29, no, 136.19 on Friday. And then they opened this morning at 135.23. That's all they have to do tomorrow. You jump the creek, and then guess what? Then, <laughs> then you have a, a daily island top, but then you would have, a, <laughs> this would be crazy. You'd have a, a, a monthly island top that would be huge. And what ends, ends up happening is if you're into... Candlestick charting, council charting, same deal. Um, the longer the amount of days that you're at either tops or bottoms, so an island top, of course you're at the top, an island bottom, you're at the bottom. The amount of days that you leave on the island, the stronger that the signal is. And in the IWM, um, that, <laughs> that very well just may be a, a, a beauty of a signal because if we dropped, yeah, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see where it shakes out. But bottom line is that it's it's it looks like it's set up uh, to get down to this 127, uh, 72 area, and that certainly would be uh, quite a hit. And you know, this is window dressing. So you know, at this point, the market made a decent comeback for you know for where it was. You know, we'll see where this shakes out. Always remember, folks. Whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. And whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like a nice big motion picture. Step into it, take ownership, and fly with it. Thanks for being here, folks. Have a great night, safe night. Look forward to speaking to you right back here tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock. Go get them, folks. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This is TFNN.